All right, uh, so let's run through these uh, quickly. Um, so to expand this, uh, first we have a quotient. So we'll start with the quotient rule, natural log of x minus the natural log of the third root of x to the fourth plus three. All right, here, that's a natural log of x. There's nothing to expand there. But here we have a, a power, really. We have a power of one third, right? So we have the natural log of x minus, we could write the third root as the one third power. So we'll take the one third down here. We'll have the natural log of x to the fourth plus three. Now, because this x to the fourth is part of an expression with three, we can't take it down, right? And we can't have the natural log of x to the fourth plus the natural log of three. That would only be if the, we had the natural log of x to the fourth times three. Okay, uh, we find the derivative and we'll do so f uh, by first using these properties to expand this and uh, take the derivative of several simpler expressions. Okay, so we have uh, y is equal to, we'll give it a power of one half. So we have one half the natural log of x squared minus four. Okay, and that's as expanded as it can be. Make my pen a little smaller here. Uh, so the derivative dy dx is equal to a one half times the derivative of the natural log. The derivative of the natural log of something is one over that x squared minus four. Chain rule says we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is two x. Okay, um, these can cancel out the two, and that two can cancel out. So we have x over x squared minus four. There we go. Um, same idea again. Move this out here. Go. I'm going to expand and then take the derivative. So f of x can be rewritten as the natural log of 15x minus the natural log of x squared plus 5. And then we can rewrite this as the natural log of 15 minus, or sorry, plus the natural log of x, since we have 15 times x, minus this one's going to stay the same. Um, the natural log of 15 is just the exponent you would need to use on e to get 15. e to the something is 15, and that's this number. The point is, this is a constant. This is a number. Um, and the derivative of any constant is 0, so this would be 0. The derivative of the natural log of x, that's our basic derivative of, of a natural log. It's 1 over x. Minus, this is uh, very similar to the one we just did in the previous problem. Um, so something that went awry there. x squared plus 5 times 2x. Uh, the x's could, no they can't because there's, there's subtraction there. So, you know, find a common denominator if you want, whatever. You definitely should be able to find a common denominator or put these together because uh, we want to be ready for the AP test. And the AP test is probably going to, if they take the derivative of something like this, going to put these together with a common denominator. All right, uh, and I can definitely help you one-on-one -on -one if you have questions about how to do that. Find the indefinite integral. So we um, are going to want to put it in, ter in, you know, in terms of an integral that we know of, like the integral of something like x to a power dx, or like the sine of x dx, which of course we can't do that here. Or e to the x dx, which, uh, or e to the u du, that's definitely not that. Or du over u, so a, a derivative over that function, a function in the denominator under its own derivative, or something close to that, right? So uh, it looks like since I have an x squared here, and this is a power of 1, that this might be the derivative of that or something close to the derivative of that. So if u is 2x squared plus 5, then du is 4x, just 4x dx. Okay, so if we had a 4x, and of course this dx could be written as in the numerator here. If we had a 4x dx, then we would have the derivative of this function up here, and it would look like du over u. So we'll put this 1 fourth out here to balance that out. Okay, what's the antiderivative of du over u? It's the natural log of u. So here we get the antiderivative is 1 fourth times the natural log of u. u is 2x squared plus 5. Absolute value, of course, plus c. 
If we were to take the derivative of this, we would wind up getting x over 2x squared plus 5. Okay, write the following expression as a logarithm of a single quantity. So we're going to put these back together. Before we can combine uh, by way of this subtraction sign, we would need to not have anything in front of the natural logs. So let's take care of that first. We'll take these and bring them up into the exponents to the 15th power minus the natural log of x squared plus 11 to the 8th power. Now they uh, don't have anything in front, and so because they're subtracted, we can put together these two as a natural log of a quotient of the two things. It's the 15th over x squared plus 11 to the 8th. Boom, there we go. Um, again, here we need to not have a 4 out in front there, so natural log of x minus natural log of x squared plus 1 to the 4th. It's subtracted, so we have natural log of x over x squared plus 1 to the 4th. Okay, find the equation of the tangent line to the graph of this thing at point 1, 0. Okay, so imagine we have some curve, and then we have a tangent line to that curve. That's not what this graph looks like, but if we had a tangent line to the curve at some point, like 1, 0, then we want, to, we want to look for the equation of this line. The equation of a line we often like to look like y equals mx plus b. Right, so I'm going to kind of make a lot of room here We're like this. If we can find m and b, we are good to go. Okay, so, well... How do we find m? It means the slope of, just the slope of the line. Well, the line is the tangent line, the line tangent to this graph at 1, 0. So find the slope means find the derivative. So y prime equals 1 over x to the 7th times 7, 7x to the 6th. Okay? Um, and uh, we get x to the 6 canceling with uh, 6 of these factors of x, and so we just get 7 over x. If you think about it, I could have rewritten this as 7 natural log x, so that makes sense. This, the derivative of this would be 7 times 1 over x. So there we go. There's the derivative. The derivative at 1, at x equals 1, is 7 over 1 is 7, so now we know that m is 7. And now we need to know b. Uh, how will we figure out what b is? Well, uh, if you're not able to picture this, uh, think about, um, I'll grab my calculator. Uh, boot up, apparently. Let's look at this function, y equals the natural log of x to the seventh. Let's first turn on the calculator. Uh, the natural log of x to the seventh power is, uh, well, what's the graph look like? This is a terrible picture of this graph. Let's get a more standard view of it. There we go. So we can see the point 1, 0 is on this graph. Of course it is. Um, let me make this bigger. All right, so it's asking about the, uh, the equation of the tangent line uh, right at this point. Let me uh, grab this and I'll mark it up. We've got this uh, point one zero, and we've got this line that's tangent to that point, right? So uh, we're trying to figure out the equation of this line. Well, we know the y-intercept we just found was, uh, let's see, uh, what's going on here? We just found the y-intercept was seven. Oh, okay. I did not find the y-intercept. I don't know why I thought I did. Found the slope. Okay, the slope. Yeesh. The slope at 7. The slope was uh, 7 over 1. Okay, so we're trying to find the y-intercept. Excuse me. That was confusing. So we're trying to find the y-intercept. Well, we don't know anything else about this line besides the slope and that it goes through this point. That's an important piece to remember. Okay, so let's zoom back in on this guy. So 
So it goes to the point one zero, so we know that y is zero, the slope is seven, x is one, and we solve for b, and b is negative seven, so y equals seven x minus seven. Find the derivative of the function, find the derivative of this guy right here. Um, again, it'd probably be easier if we go ahead and uh, use the properties of logarithms. So we got x times the square root of x squared plus 15. So I'm going to do that a little bit more quickly. We've done this a few times. So I'm going to make y equal to um, the natural log of x plus 1 half times the natural log of x squared plus 15. Okay. And now y prime will be the natural log of what? Uh, the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x plus 1 half times the derivative of this. The derivative of this is 1 over x squared plus 15 times the derivative of x squared plus 15, which is 2x. These 2s can cancel out. We get 1 over x plus x over x squared plus 15. All right. Locate any relative uh, extreme endpoints of inflection for this function. Use graphing utility to confirm your results. OK, so um, y prime equals, of course, this is to find possible extrema. Um, it's going to be, let me bring down the 13 here. It's going to cancel that 13. So we're just going to get x to the 12th minus 1 over x. OK, and we're going to want to set that to 0 x to the 12th minus 1 over x equals 0. Let's see. Let's just multiply through by x. I'll get x to the 13th minus 1 equals 0. Um, so x equals, oh, sorry, 13th. x equals 1. If we add 1 to both sides and take the 13th root, we'll get x is equal to 1. OK. So then that's where we have a, uh, a possible extrema. <coughs> How do we figure out if it's a maximum or a minimum? Um, well, we could look at the derivatives and see if on the left of one, if it's positive, and then switch to the negative, or vice versa. Um, so we could plug in values that are to the left of one and to the right of one into the derivative and see what kind of slopes we get. Or we can take the second derivative, which we're going to have to do anyway to find points of inflection. So let's take the second derivative take the derivative of that. Okay, so that becomes 12x to the 11th uh, minus, let's see, I guess, plus 1 over x squared. Okay, because we could write this as x to the negative 1, and then we multiply by negative 1 and get positive 1, and then subtract 1, and we get negative 2. All right, so we're going to set this equal to 0. Go ahead and set that equal to 0. I'm going to multiply through by x squared, so I'm going to distribute x squared to this side. And to this side, we get 0 equals 12x to the um, 13th plus 1. Um, I'm going to, this seems crazy. We're going to subtract 1 and get 12x to the 13th equals negative 1. We're going to divide by 12x to the 1 13th is equal to negative 1 over 12. Take the 13th root of negative 1 over 12. Um, okay, so at 1, what is the second derivative doing? 12x to the 11th plus 1 over x squared. Uh, is it positive or negative? Which means if it's uh, positive, it's concave up, and therefore this is a minimum. If it's negative, it's concave down, and therefore this is a maximum. Um, plug it in 1, we find a 1, and a 12 times 1. Uh, so 12 plus 1 is 13. So it's positive, it's concave up, so this is a minimum. Right, point of inflection at the uh, possibly the 13th root of negative 1 12th. 